Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. This is Kelsey here today with Greg Dunn. He's the founder and managing partner at SFE Partners. Greg, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kelsey. Great to be here. So, Greg, tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I am a career sales executive. I have been uh, enjoying the sales profession um, since I graduated from school and have gone through a fairly traditional sales route from um, a technology background all the way through running global sales organizations. Um, in 2006, I decided to start a consulting company um, that was really geared towards helping startup companies figure out how to develop and execute on go-to-market strategies. And since then, it's evolved into SFE Partners, and here we are today. That's fantastic. So tell me a little bit more about SFE Partners. Sure, SFE Partners. SFE is Salesforce Effectiveness. Salesforce Effectiveness is really designed to maximize the potential throughput for all of the contributing members of a sales and marketing organization. Um, it's really designed to develop a strong um, sales and marketing engine within growing companies uh, that's capable of helping people hit the numbers, not just for today, but also um, based on investment thesis and, and plans for scale uh, for years to come. Interesting, interesting. So what would you say makes SFE Partners stand out from its competition then? Well, we are solely focused on sales and marketing engines and the development and execution, again, of go-to-market strategies for companies that are experiencing scale in their sales organizations. How do you put in place the systems, the process, the technology, the marketing tech stack, um, you know, the people, the organizational structure, the messaging, everything necessary to get sales um, a little less kind of visceral and subjective and a little more objective and scientific so that people can execute on their numbers. There are lots of other consulting organizations out there, and they tend to focus on lots of different things, business process and planning and general consulting. But as far as I know, we're one of the few that really just focus on sales and marketing. Okay. Okay. So is there a specific industry that you see um, SFE partners, you know, uh, trending more towards too, or is it is it really any and every industry? So over the last 16 years or so, we've helped well over 300 companies around the globe in a variety of different industries. Um, we do have some parameters around the kinds of companies that we work with. Uh, first of all, uh, our, our expertise is really in B2B sales. Okay. Um, so we tend to stay away from B2C sales other than maybe helping people with some obvious technology installations or um, uh, you know, the development of you know, documentation or process, but we're not specialists really in B2C. Okay. Um, we are specialists in things ranging from manufacturing, healthcare, technology, and SaaS. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so um, we've got a, a litany of different or transportation and logistics, a litany of different organization types that we work with. Um, but we also have access to resources around the world that we can pull in for folks that have um, requirements for expertise in areas that go outside, you know, the traditional uh, experiences for the SFE team. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about that. So our core team is 20 some odd salespeople scattered throughout North America. Um, but because we've all had long careers in sales and sales consulting, uh, we have rich networks of people that we've worked with in the past around the globe. And so we tend to call in partners and, you know, and, and, uh, um, and experts in particular areas in order to be able to help our customers satisfy their go-to-market strategy you know, requirements uh, quickly and effectively with people who know their businesses. Yeah, that's fantastic. So you said SFE Partners has really grown for you, correct me if I'm wrong, over the last 16 years, correct? Correct. So we have a, a kind of a storied history here. Um, uh, in 2006, we started a, an organization called Mansfield Sales Partners, um, and we sold it to private equity um, in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, we since spun it back out of private equity uh, just uh, about eight months ago and re-established as SFE Partners. Um, and we're growing almost as if we're a recreated startup. I love that. 
I love that. And, you know, what is it that has made that, that do you attribute to that success in this expansion? Well, you know, one of the things that we look at when we're helping clients is, um, uh, you know, what are their goals for exit and whether or not they actually plan to exit, what is it that we can do to help their sales and marketing organizations establish the type of scale that would materially increase their valuation? Mm -hmm. So for instance, we work with lots of private equity companies around the globe and those private equity companies buy companies that maybe have slightly less mature sales organizations. They were founder led or they had been growing kind of in the manufacturing space for a period of time and, and really hadn't had a, a professionalization exercise. And we match that with the investment thesis that the, <clears throat> that the investors have put in place for the company valuation and what they expect the valuation to be at exit. Mm -hmm. And then we execute on a strategy that matches the investment thesis that these people have put in place. And so we're really focused on not just improving sales and you know, sales technology and marketing technology, but actually improving the valuation of the company by opening up new markets, professionalizing the organization, creating the ability to scale through technology and enablement programs, um, building playbooks and building um, you know, the tools that sales, professional sales and marketing organizations need and allowing them to be able to add lots of heads and, you know, and, um, you know, and lots of um, uh technology to be able to support a rapidly scaling sales group. All right, Greg. So you talked a little bit about private equity companies. Talk to me a little bit more about that in your experience. So during the time that we were owned by private equity, um, I was uh, fortunate enough to work with a portfolio filled of companies that needed attention in scaling sales and um, increasing the valuation prior to exit. And so I assumed a role as uh, what we call the revenue operating partner, which was a traditional private equity operating partner, but purely focused on the sales and marketing engine within other portfolio companies. And what we found is that by paying attention to um, building the scale and the repeatability of the sales organizations, applying the professionalization, the systems, the technology, the current strategies, and you know, importantly, increasing the TAM, the total addressable market uh, that these companies went after, we were able to move the needle on the valuation at exit. Mm -hmm. And so what I work with our companies on, whether they're private equity owned or not, or whether we're talking directly to private equity firms or investment firms, we always think about our clients as um, how do we increase the valuation of the company in general? Because there's nothing bad that comes of that, even if you're looking for exit. Right. And so we apply those same kind of methodologies and strategies that we applied in the private equity world to helping the enterprise understand, you know, not just how they can make more effective and more efficient the sales team that they already have, addressing the markets that they already have, but how do you grow that in such a way that you can, you know, that uh, uh, the valuation, you know, shows, you know, more than just incremental growth, but actually strategic growth at the top line. Interesting. So, so say someone wanted to start working, one of our listeners wanted to start working with SFE partners, how would they go about kind of what that, what would that relationship look like from, from the beginning? So traditionally, the way we get started is we work with our clients on an assessment phase, which is what does current state look like? Mm -hmm. And what recommended changes would we propose in order to be able to get the organization to the point where they really feel like sales is firing on all cylinders? Yeah. Um, and that their people are hitting their goals and productive and they're able to retain, you know, to, to, to recruit, retain, you know, and, uh, um, and make successful top mm -hmm. talent. Mm -hmm. um, once we hand off those recommendations to our clients, um, we take kind of a project by project approach. So we don't go in and say, look, we want to do everything all at once. And here's a master plan for how you can keep SFE partners employed for the next three or four years, you know, doing all these wonderful things. We take the projects in priority order, we create statements of work, and then we attack them one at a time. And as long as our clients are enjoying the work that they're doing with us and seeing the results, mm -hmm. the return on investment for the activities that we're doing with them, they tend to just move from project to project until they've you know, created what they need to create for their internal group. Yeah, that's fantastic. And what would an example of one of those projects you know, potentially be? So for instance, um, a lot of times the organizational structure the, the organizational structure within sales and marketing has um, uh, you know has antiquated and, and the companies have uh, uh, outgrown the org structure that they currently have. So we may create a um, 
an alternative org structure complete with job descriptions, compensation plans to drive behavior, um, the things necessary for them to be able to get to the next step with the yeah. added um, the added management and you know uh, and, and sales talent necessary to, to get to get there. Um, we are very big at evaluating and implementing modern tech stacks to be able to help with inbound marketing programs. So the way people fill their funnel these days is very different than they were filling it even just two years ago. And a lot of it is based on uh, inbound marketing and people's ability to be able to find you online and do all the things necessary for salespeople to be spending their time talking to people who are actually in a buying cycle and interested <laughs> in buying something that your organization sells. And so we deploy modern tech stacks to be able to be to 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 feed you know the quantity of leads into the sales organization that can help make them productive. Um, we deploy CRM, you know, another technology, um, and do the integrations necessary for them to provide a vessel for salespeople to actually make their day more efficient and more effective. So it's not just about salespeople entering information because you know they're reporting into their you know to their leadership. It's also about leadership. Um, interacting with the salespeople and giving them reason to log on to those systems and immerse themselves in, in those types of CRM systems. Um, so there's a, a wide variety of things that we do yeah. to make salespeople more effective. Yeah, that's I'm sure that's so helpful for companies as well, not only like help, helping structurally, but helping with, you know, refined processes and procedures as well. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that people do, um, like that seem normal inside the organization. But when you take a step back and look at it, um, you know, don't represent best practices. Mm -hmm. A good example might be how they train and enable their salespeople. How long does it take to get somebody, you know, from the hiring phase to be fully functioning and quote and quota generating or, you know, quota carrying salespeople? Mm -hmm. And what kinds of tools do you have online training tools and learning tools? Do you provide consistency in how they learn about not just the organization, but the industry, the market, the competitors, all, all the other things? And so we tend to automate those things with the expectation that when companies are going through explosive growth, they're going to have to bring lots of people on, you know, into the organization pretty quickly. And not all of those people may be experts in the particular, you know, um, market that that right. the company's selling into and so how do you make them effective really quickly so that they can get out and you know and start generating revenue right absolutely to generate the the, the company more revenue and mm -hmm. and on the topic of revenue um do you charge by statement of work or is it you know how does how does sfe partners generate revenue from from their from their clients so we are project-based project statement based of work okay. driven yeah. right and so um we uh, offer these assessments um, I wouldn't quite call them a loss leader, but we offer them um, in a way that allows customers to get some value early on and to understand our capabilities. Um, and then we go project by project. And yeah. uh, the nice thing about sales consulting, Kelsey, is that um, we tend to make money for our clients. We tend not to cost money right. for our clients because along the way, we're finding opportunities. We're improving their pipeline you know, development and acquisition of, of, of prospects. We're doing a lot of things that are necessary so that the vast majority of our clients call us back you know, within the first few quarters and go, we never would have gotten these kinds of deals. We never would have tried to enter this particular market. Yeah. We never would have changed our pricing model um, to the extent that we have so that, you know, that our organization has uh, easily returned the investment necessary to be able to provide almost free consulting. Yeah, right. And it sounds as if, you know, one of the one of the largest parts of that is that trust factor, um, because it sounds like you're one, obviously a very trustworthy company and being able to say, like having companies trust their innermost workings and saying, like, hey, this is where we might need some growth isn't always the easiest thing for companies to admit when they're wrong. So I'm sure like being able to say, like, provide that like that guidance of, you know, hey, this can work so much better. Exactly. You know, you can't go into a new relationship and say, trust me, because that's the most surefire way to get somebody to not trust you. <laughs> what you can do is exp you, you can um, you can talk to them intelligently about breadth of experience. Mm -hmm. So having helped 300 and something companies you know, yeah. over time, we've seen companies that look a lot like our clients. Right. Like we we're not seeing things for the first time mm -hmm. and we have stories to tell about what we've done to be able to help those particular clients, what we tried, what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. And over time, we, you know, we, we can pattern match on the things that we think are most likely to present the result that our client expects based on, you know, lots and lots of experience from our team and from our clients. Right. And so, you know, so that, that helps a lot with the trust yeah. factor because 
the stories that we tell make oh. it clear that we know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Uh, so if, Greg, if there was one thing that you would want our listeners to know, either about SFE partners or the industry, what, what would you want them to know? You know, there's, it's, it's well known that sales is part art and part science, um, but it happens to be more science than art. And there's a lot of things that you can do to establish repeatability and to significantly improve the Salesforce effectiveness inside mm -hmm. of your organization. Mm -hmm. And we bring the science into what would otherwise be kind of an artsy trade. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, our clients can experience the kind of growth that they expect and increase the valuation of their company based on their ability to, you know, not grow a few percent a year and continue keeping on, keeping on, but actually materially change the way they represent themselves to potential investors, potential yeah. acquirers, or even just, you know, the, the profit that they're able to take out of the business as an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Greg, this has been a really great conversation kind of about the historical record that SFE partners of success that they can bring to their partners, you know, the, the capabilities that you have, uh, and then the research based approach, like you said, it's more science than it is art being able to take that into your relationships, I think is fantastic. So, Greg, thank you for being on Business Ninjas. Uh, Greg, uh, again, Greg Dunn, he's the founder and managing partners at FSE, FSE, SFE Partners. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Thank you, Kelsey. Appreciate right, it. Bye. Absolutely. Okay.